All right, guys, good morning. Welcome back to this live podcast of Total OS Live. This morning we'll do, uh, we'll talk about some uh, movie news, some tech, and stuff like that. Before we get started, of course, I'm going to give a quick shout out to my dad for, for providing me with some of the music. Those of you watching this podcast, that is, this is my dad in the middle. And uh, can you guys guess the two famous actors on the left and right? If you don't know who they are, I'll tell you at the end. <laughs> so we'll be talking a little bit about some latest movie news for this early morning. Of course, I like to start my mornings with some Keurig making coffee, Keurig machine. These are great. Little K-cups, pop them in. Coffee in a minute or so. Nice, fresh, and hot. Oh, yeah. Take a sip right now. Cheers. Ah, uh, I keep forgetting to buy creamer though, milk, anyway. So, yeah, this morning, uh, the stream is provided by Dad and uh, coffee and, of course, a little bit of mint for the technically curious. This is uh, Linux Mint I am using on a machine from 2011, a Lenovo machine that originally had Windows 7. Yes, that Windows 7. The machine still works. I know it's outdated. I actually dual boot this with Windows 11. Another terrific, dare I say, lightweight operating system. At least it feels lightweight to some other operating systems out there. I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but yeah, it works great. All right, so here we are in the movie summer, a blockbuster movie summer. If, if you haven't already check out the latest Mission Impossible, Dead Reckoning Part 1, as you see here, this has almost 100% rating on Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, I give this one an A+. It's probably the best, if not one of the best, Mission Impossible movies out there, one of the best movies all year. I had asked my dad, what was it like working with Tom Cruise on a movie? Oh, 20 years ago, called Vanilla Sky. I don't think I've seen that one. And my dad says, oh, Tom's a normal guy. You know, on the set, he was fun to be with, easy to talk to. And I joked, oh, just a normal guy who likes to jump off of planes, cliffs, trains, buildings, and all that stuff. But that's what Tom Cruise does. And when you go see his movies, movies like Mission Impossible, you'll definitely get your money's worth. It's, 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 it's pretty obvious over the course of seven Movies and I guess uh, Dead Reckoning Part uh, Two is almost uh, well. I think they said. I think the director said uh, Dead Reckoning Part Two is forty percent filmed. Uh, last I believe they were in Africa. Of course, with the actor strike, uh, I'm not sure how long that is going to be delayed. But uh, yeah, check out Mission Impossible, Dead Reckoning Part 1. I don't think my dad has seen this. He's, he's back in Italy trying to get his movie, you know, out there and promote it. It's, it's been a challenge uh, post-pandemic. Some of you know what I'm talking about. And uh, I don't admit, hey, Tom, if you're watching this, give my dad a call or give me a, give, give me a call. Yeah, my dad needs a partner for his movie. Come on, you can do it. Uh, so, yeah. Well, speaking of, um, let's go to the next one here. Speaking of actors, um, <laughs> the actor strike, I guess some of these actors, as you see here, are getting pennies paid on royalty checks or, or uh, not royalty checks, but residual checks for some of the work that they do on famous, uh, you know, shows you would see on Paramount Plus, Disney Plus, and other streaming services. Now, this is something my dad was part of uh, the uh, uh, Screen Actors Guild starting with um, 1972, starting with The Godfather, and he retired after, uh, I think the last film my dad was involved in was um, Spider-Man 2, I think. 
But this is something that my dad and I had talked about back in 2017 when he flew in from Rome as we were uh, talking about uh, wrapping up, uh, finishing up his movie that was filmed there. But he had mentioned about getting pennies, a check for pennies in the, in the mail for the work he did over the years working on movies. I, I found it kind of weird at the time. Now, here we are, uh, 2023. This is 2017, six years ago. I thought, I thought that was very strange and funny and kind of stupid. But I never really thought about it anymore since we were talking about him and his movie. But this is a problem. Uh, that needs to be addressed. And, and I think one of the actors or actresses says, yeah, one of my uh, checks was like in the negative, like a negative penny or negative two cents. Uh, talk about fuzzy math. I don't understand how quite all of this works. Uh, like I said, my dad was in the business for quite a few years. I was never in the business. Maybe I should have been. It sounds like it would have been fun. Maybe not now. As the world, as the uh, streaming technology world has changed dramatically since my dad got into the business years ago with the Godfather movies. But yeah, this is sad. It, it shouldn't have come to this uh, strike. Um, yeah, so your favorite movies and shows that you're looking forward to may be delayed an extra year. So I'm hoping this can be resolved uh, fairly quickly but this has been going on for months now so I don't know what is going to happen all right let's stick on with movie news Francis Ford Coppola uh, who my dad has worked with on the Godfather movies uh, I'll tell you a quick funny story in the filming of Godfather 1 my dad says uh, the director Francis walked up to him and this bunch of actors saying hey uh, this was the wedding scene in Godfather 1 and I guess the director says hey start a fight you guys are Italians you're drunk you're being silly let's do a, a friendly fight scene that was filmed uh, but it was never shown in theaters or not in the final cut according to what my dad says there's there's a photo that I've posted I believe on YouTube when I did the interview with my dad of that scene where they're playfully, drunkenly fighting in the wedding scene in The Godfather, but that was never shown in theaters. Anyway, Francis Ford Coppola on Barbie and Oppenheimer is calling this the new golden age of cinema, referring to the success of Barbie and Oppenheimer. I'm surprised with the, with the success of Barbie. Uh, not so much surprised with the success of, of Oppenheimer. But look, uh, this is the first post-pandemic summer. Uh, you know, people want to go out and watch movies. The, there was a hint of this last summer, uh, going, see, uh, going to see Top Gun 2 or Top Gun Maverick. And uh, last summer, the big news, how Tom Cruise saved the movie industry with the movie that was almost 10 years in the making. Since it was first announced, it was delayed due to the pandemic, and the movie wound up making $1.5 billion at the box office during the pandemic. That says a lot. People were just freaking bored and wanted to get out. Pardon me while I drink another sip of coffee here. And by the way, when I'm done, I'll, um, I'll slip into the chat and see if, if there is anybody in there. I don't know when to do these live chats anymore. I have not been getting really too much feedback. I was kind of hoping to get more feedback post-pandemic, but feel free to post your comments about the live shows, the live content. And if anybody would like to sponsor a live show, please let me know. But getting back to this, uh, yeah, uh, Barbie Oppenheimer or the Barbenheimer effect, I guess the success of these two films comes at the expense of Mission Impossible. I guess Mission Impossible has not been doing as well as expected. I'm sure in the end it'll be fine, but uh, yeah, Dead Reckoning Part 1, maybe they, maybe the film should, should just have been titled without the Part 1. Just put Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning 
and then let the audience word of mouth saying, oh, so this is part one. Maybe that would have been a better marketing strategy. Just a thought, Tom Cruise. So I'm, I'm sure part two will be better than part one, but yeah, maybe they should have just called it, you know, Mission Impossible, Dead Reckoning, and just leave it at that. But uh, yeah, if you have kids, what can I say? Check out Barbie, although I think Barbie actually has a human story to it. Uh, Oppenheimer, we all know about the father of the atomic bomb, uh, J. Robert Oppenheimer, so I don't need... I don't think I need to talk more about that. All right, so we talked about Tom Cruise and the movies. This is this is a cool story. If you haven't already, check out uh, a YouTube channel called Popcorn in Bed. I believe this channel was started a few years ago during the pandemic by a couple of sisters who do movie reaction videos on YouTube. They reacted to the movie uh, Mission Impossible Fallout, and the story goes uh, that Tom Cruise and the director McHugh, Christopher McQuarrie, he's called McHugh, they saw the video while filming uh, Mission Impossible in Africa. They saw the reaction video from these two unknown sisters, and they thought the video, they thought the reactions were hilarious. I, th I think Tom said, or the director said, that they were left in stitches watching these two girls react to Fallout. So Tom says, oh, we have to invite these girls to the premiere of Mission Impossible in New York, oh, my hometown. I think my invitation got lost in the mail, but yeah. <laughs> anyway, these two sisters, I don't know, I guess one girl is named Cassie, but uh, they actually got an email, an invitation, phone call, whatever you want to call it, from uh, the director and Tom to say, hey, we saw you on YouTube. You girls are great. We would like to invite you to the premiere Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning in New York. Now, how cool is that? Uh, I know nothing about these sisters. I think they're from, like, Wyoming or Utah or something uh, out west of, or west of me cool story it just goes to show that you never know who's watching so once again tom if you're watching this my dad needs a partner for his movie and i think you're a good guy but check out uh popcorn in bed all right so mission impossible uh seven deals with uh, without too many spoils spoilers uh, take a super rogue AI, super intelligence, combine that with the inherent stupidity of man. What could possibly go wrong? That is the premise of the latest Mission Impossible movie. Uh, artificial intelligence uh, could lead to extinction, experts warn. This is from the BBC. Is this really possible? Well, I hope not, but never underestimate the stupidity of humans. You know, as humans, human history, we've done great things. We've done not so great things. So is this possible? I would have to say yes. Uh, just like with any uh, tool, technology is a tool that can be used for good and bad. And we have to be careful with how we use certain tools, including the tool of technology. I just realized I've been drinking my coffee black without sugar. I thought something was off, but that's okay. Chatting with you guys is very sweet. Ha uh ha. -huh. So what do you guys think about all this? Artificial intelligence could lead to human extinction, kind of like the Terminator movies. Um, yes, I would say it's, uh, it's possible. All right, let me take a quick uh, coffee refill break here. I'll be back. Still some more news to talk about. So uh, for those of you watching this, uh, please stick around for a minute or two. Don't go away.
Okay, I'm back. Fresh coffee. I like this song from my dad. It's the Oh Hey I'm Screwed song. This this one always puts a smile on my face. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, let's talk about uh, technology. <coughs> Excuse me. This one made me kind of laugh. Built-in software death dates sending school Chromebooks to the recycling bin. Uh, this is from a newspaper out of California, or as Arnold Schwarzenegger would say, from California. <laughs> Chromebooks are terminated. <laughs> Sorry, just throwing in some Arnold, having some fun. Hey, it's my stream. I can have some fun, right? Um, Chromebook sales exploded uh, during the pandemic, especially for school systems looking for an affordable, reliable way to continue educating our kids. Great, great idea, except the people who bought these books, well, they didn't do their homework. Chromebooks built before 2020, uh, some of the Chromebooks would only give you uh, between, I believe, three and five years of, of uh, security updates. That has changed since uh, from Chromebooks built in 2020 now you can get up to eight years or more of security updates for the chromebook so i guess a lot of these chromebooks <laughs> they were buying these maybe uh, used or older models without doing their homework and uh they have become somewhat uh obsolete says here that Google has made some adjustments, began guaranteeing an eight-year shelf life for its Chromebooks in 2020. That's not bad for a machine starting at $200. Uh, yeah, it says here devices bought at Oakland last year, for example, have a 2029 expiration date. So there you go. If you're looking for a Chromebook, and it's my top pick for a Linux-powered machine that's affordable and reliable, now, you can extend the life of these Chromebooks with something called lacrosse that I've talked about before. Yeah, so Chromebooks are great. If you want something lightweight, affordable, get on the web, stream music, listen to me, whatever you want to do. Uh, Chromebooks are easy, affordable, lightweight. I've never seen a bug in these, at least not yet. They're just so easy to use and so fast. And again, starting at about $200 all the way up to, I think, what, $900. Now, Google is coming out with something called the Chromebook X, uh, I guess, to dif differentiate between the lower-end Chromebooks and the higher-end Chromebooks. Uh, I just caught a brief glimpse of the Chromebook X news. Don't know too much about it, but just to make it easier for shoppers to find out what's going on with uh, Chromebooks. But yeah, if, if you're buying a Chromebook, just to try it out of what, what this is all about, you should. But just keep in mind that Chromebooks built, manufactured before 2020, will not give you the eight years of normal security updates. All right, what else do we have here? Electric cars, that appears to be the future. I guess Toyota's working on a breakthrough in solid state battery technology. I guess they're hoping to get uh, sometime in the future, these cars getting up to 900 miles on a single charge. Uh, <laughs> uh, 
I suppose with technology, anything is possible. That's a lot of miles. What's the average range for today's batteries for electric cars? 200 miles, 300 miles. I guess that drops considerably running the AC or in extreme cold weather, I do believe. So yeah, solid state batteries might be the future for EV cars. If this is accurate, this is fantastic. Uh, don't know what the price of these cars will be, but uh, yeah, um, look, I just like most people, I try to avoid gas stations as much as I can. You know, the price of look, I, I for regular gas, there is no reason for gas to be above two dollars a gallon for regular gas. I know there's there's regular, mid grade, and premium. That should be higher, but $2 a gallon gas right now I think would be fair. I know that when I'm putting more money in my gas tank, I'm spending less money like for food or going out to dinner, you know, not going as much to the movies because, well, the money is in my Saturn <laughs> cars, in my Saturn gas tank. So, yeah, so if this is the the future of battery solid state, and this range, at least this is what Toyota is shooting for, that is okay with me. Because I need more power, as Arnold would say, more power. <laughs> All right, well, we talked about the danger of AI. Netflix is touting uh, $900,000 a year AI jobs amid Hollywood strikes. So if you're a computer geek or an AI Greek geek, Greek geek, computer programmer, coder, master hacker, and you're looking for tech jobs of the future, apparently AI, AI jobs, if this is accurate, are paying up to $900,000 a year for AI jobs. Um, yes, that way you can help make humanity extinct with the rise of Terminator AIs. Hmm. Oh my goodness. All right. What else do we have here? One more news article. Let's keep, let's end this on a light note. Mr. Beast, uh, probably the most famous YouTuber with, I don't know, 900 gazillion subscribers. Uh, he is suing a, a fast food company over his revolting. <laughs> I'm sorry, this is just too funny. Over a revolting burger. I guess he hired a, a company to make Mr. Beast burgers. But the fans are calling the burger revolting. Uh... He's asking for a judge to terminate the arrangement from back in 2020. Uh, fans of Mr. Beast are saying that the quality of the burgers is so bad they are in, in, inedible. Wow. Uh, <laughs> uh, I guess this, this is not a joke. This, this is real. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, Mr. Beast is definitely fun to watch. I guess his name is Jimmy Donaldson. Humble beginnings from, the, from this young man. And, uh, yeah. So, I don't know. I There are no Mr. Beast burger chains where I live. So, uh, I don't know. But to say that the burger is revolting... I mean, I get it if it's, you know, if somebody says, oh, the burger, it's okay, I tried it once, that's it. But to say a, a hamburger is revolting, how bad does it have to be for it to be literally called revolting? Wow. Okay. Still got a half a cup of coffee here. Let me go into the chat and see if anybody is in the chat. Again, if I miss most of you guys, maybe I'll catch you on the next one. I'm in the chat. It looks like I have to refresh this. Hang on. It looks like uh, Mark says, hey, Toss. Well, hello, Mark. How are you? If you're still there watching and listening to this podcast, 
Great to have you here. Looks like right now only Mark is in the chat, but I'll stick around a little bit longer. Let's see if anybody else pops in. Once again, I don't know when the schedule is. Just It just seems like ever since the pandemic started, it's life is kind of wonky, as it were. Let me grab another sip of coffee here. If you are watching uh, and you're wondering whether to say hello, don't be shy. Even just a quick hello would be great. You know, pre-pandemic, we would we would usually have many people in the chat. Times have changed, but uh, if you're there and are thinking about saying hello, watching this, please do. I'd love to say hello. And you don't have to give your real name and all that stuff. Just say hello and we'll go from there. Once again, for the Technically Curious, this morning's podcast using a little bit of Linux Mint on a Lenovo, dual booting with Windows 11. So far, it works pretty good. If you have done or have seen any of the movies that we've talked about or if you have bought a Chromebook and would like to share your experiences, please do. All right, I'll stick around for as long as it is to finish this cup of coffee. Quiet morning. Looks like only one person in the chat. Before I forget, I did get a reminder from the Zorn OS team that Zorn OS, uh, what is it, 15? Well, has reached its end of uh, updates, end of life, so you need to upgrade immediately to the next one. I believe it expired June 1st, as of this recording last month. So, yeah, if you're running Zorn OS 15, I believe it's 15, that one has expired you need to download uh, whatever updates are left to run the Zorn OS upgrader and upgrade to the next version that is a brand new feature from Zorn. It was, uh, I believe, the, the most number one requested feature for Zorn, Zorn OS 
Again, Zorin OS is on my top three Linux for Windows users. So, again, you should upgrade to Zorin OS immediately. All right, I'm going to wrap this up. As a reminder, you can download the audio version of these podcasts on the TOS Today Patreon page if you would like to support the channel. And we're at the halfway mark. So I think we'll wrap it up. Thank you, Mark, for stopping by, and I'll catch the rest of you on the next one. Ciao.